Hi Shandon friends, happy Wednesday. You made it to the middle of the week. Everyone is doing great. We are so glad that we can continue to be in touch this way. We look forward to the day when we can connect on Wednesday evenings more like we're accustomed with being together and sharing a meal and laughter and stories. But in the meantime, know that we are holding you in our hearts and you are just as much with us in spirit as ever. A few announcements for you about our life together this week. Uh, this Saturday is the walk to end Alzheimer's. And that walk looks different this year because of COVID, but the way that it is working this year is that the walk is everywhere. And this Saturday in particular, a small group of folks from Shandon who will be socially distanced and masked, they will walk from Shandon Presbyterian Church to Five Points, get some coffee at Drip Coffee, and then walk back to the church. The total distance they'll cover is about two miles. So they will be meeting in the church parking lot at 10 a.m. and they'll start work walking at 1020. You are welcome to stop by and offer donations toward the walk or even walk with them if you like. Wear purple, wear a mask, make a sign, and be ready to have some fun while supporting efforts to end Alzheimer's. If you have any questions or would like more information about that, contact Mary Rogers. A reminder that this Sunday evening, we do have an outdoor prayer service. This will be our first in-person worship gathering since I've been with you. And I have to admit, I am excited about it. Our five o'clock service has already filled up. We do have a capacity of 50 individuals. The five o'clock service is full, but we are repeating the exact same service at six o'clock so that everyone that wants to be there has an opportunity to do so. To sign up, contact Jess Joyner in the church office to go ahead and register. Because of the health precautions we are taking, we are requiring attendance uh, registration ahead of time. We know that some of you are eager for this. We know that others are not quite ready to gather in person yet, and we love and respect each and every one of you. So we look forward to seeing some of you on Sunday and we look forward to connecting with others through porch visits and phone calls and all of the other ways we have found to continue being community together. We also want to update you about All Saints Day. All Saints Day is coming up on Sunday, November 1st. During worship in the morning, which will be online, we will continue our tradition of reading the necrology during worship. That's the list of all of our church members who have died in the past year. We will remember them with gratitude and thanksgiving and include them in that spoken prayer. We're aware that this has been an unusual and difficult year and that lots of you have been unable to grieve the loss of a loved one in some of the ways that we have come to hold close. So we want to make space for that during this service. So in addition to the necrology that we will read aloud, we will also include the names of anyone you wish to have remembered in this All Saints Day service. We'll include those names visibly in the worship recording that week. We won't be able to read all of those names out loud, but you will see all of those names incorporated into the video and they will certainly be incorporated in all of our hearts. If you would like us to include any names, again, contact Jess Joyner in the church office and she will make sure that we get that. We do need to have any and all of those names submitted to us by the end of the day on Wednesday, October 28th so that they can be included properly in our recording. As well for All Saints Day, on that evening between 5 and 6.30, you are invited to come to the Memorial Garden and say a brief prayer or light a candle for a loved one. It's just a time when that space will be open and available to you. There'll be some music playing in the background. The pastors will be on site. We'll have candles. There's no formal service. There is nothing prescribed about it. We are simply making the space available to you and welcoming you to come and be present if you wish. If you check your mail in the coming days, you will see that stewardship season is upon us and that those materials have been mailed to you. 
Stewardship is much more than a season. It's really a way of understanding and orienting our lives to God. But it is also a particular time in the year when we give thanks to God for the ministry of this church and when we dream and vision together about what the future of our ministry will look like. A piece of that visioning is always financial. We need to know what our budget is so we can imagine together how we will use those finances entrusted to us for the ministry of God here in Columbia. So again, those materials about our stewardship season have been mailed to you. We invite you to take a look through them and prayerfully consider your financial support of the church. We will be talking about this in worship on November 1st and 8th and 15th. November 15th is Dedication Sunday. You will get lots of more information about this between now and then. But since there are some items on their way to your mailbox, we wanted to alert you to that now. As always with these updates, we want to share the joys and concerns of the church, and we do have some updates for you there as well. Brooks Wheeler is having surgery on Monday at Duke, and she appreciates your prayers for that. Sandy Stillinger, one of our staff members who works with the weekday school, she has been battling an infection, and she's doing okay, but it's persisting and it's causing her a good deal of pain, so she appreciates your prayers for her healing. Joey McCorkle, we are delighted to share with you that he is at home. He is no longer in the hospital. His recovery will continue, of course, so our prayers are both for healing and for thanksgiving for healing that has already happened. Gary Cannon, we have some more good news there. Gary has been moved to a rehab hospital, so his recovery is also continuing on track. Phyllis Peterson recently had knee, sur uh, knee surgery. She had a knee replacement and is hopefully headed home from the hospital any day now. Hilda Booth is waiting test results and appreciates prayers both for those tests and for the waiting. Waiting is always difficult, isn't it? And finally, we also remember in prayer Ernest Spangler. Ernest is the grandfather of Luke Spangler. Luke, of course, is our own Molly Spangler's husband. Um, Ernest is on hospice care, so our prayers are with him and with the entire Spangler family. We are grateful that we can be a community that comes together in prayerful support of one another in good times and in hard times. Now, as you might remember, those of you that attended our Donut Worry, Be Happy event, a lot of you participated in a collective art project linking together our hopes for ourselves and our hopes for the church and our hopes for the community. You wrote them on these slips of paper and we linked them all together. We have placed these chains over in the Sewers Chapel. I pulled them out and put them here just for tonight's video but they're in the Sowers Chapel. You are welcome to schedule a time to come and be in the sanctuary or the chapel and enjoy some meditative time in that space. And if you would like to read through some of the hopes and dreams that were included, you are welcome to do so. I thought I might read a few to you this evening. So the, the red paper, for those of you that remember, that is when you were invited to list hopes you have for yourself. And I don't have any names, and I have no idea who wrote these, but we'll lift them up together anyways and commit these hopes and dreams to God. To feel, to feel that I am in the place that God needs for me to be. I hope for good health. I hope for continued good health. That is a consistent hope that we all have, especially these days, I think. I hope that I will get to play together with my friends soon. I hope that I will maintain some semblance of sanity. I hope that I can hold things together. I hope that I can find reasons to be happy. I hope that I will be able to watch football. I hope for peace. I pray
pray that God will be in control concerning the outcome of the virus. I hope that we will love each other. I hope my mommy knows I love her. I hope we will learn to talk about our differences and still hold hands at the table. I hope for understanding and peace and cooperation. I hope there will be shoes for everyone who needs them. I hope that we will learn to take care of all of our neighbors. I hope that we will see and realize justice. And this green chain was hopes that we have for our church together. I hope that we can someday get back to the old normal. I hope that Shandon can continue the strong stand for social justice we have begun. I hope that we can be a beacon and welcoming to all who need to feel at home. I hope that we can keep up our membership and our budget. I hope that we can be back together in person soon. I hope that we will persevere through all of this and that we will be a shining inspiration to others to do the same. I hope that we will always be a place that welcomes children. I hope that we will love our neighbors. I hope that we will be an inclusive and accepting space and for, let me try that one again. I hope that we will be an inclusive, accepting place in the Midlands and beyond. These are just a few of the hopes and dreams that you shared. As you can see, there are many more that I haven't read but they are here, they are being prayed over, and they are certainly held within the heart of God. Shandon, know that we miss you, we love you, we cannot wait to see you, and we are holding you in our hearts always. Take care, and we'll see you on Sunday, whether that's online or in person. Peace be with you.